Hello everyone, my name is Timothy Banks. I would very much have liked to be with you all at this gathering and to celebrate together the observatory's 50 years. Unfortunately, I can't be there. I was fortunate enough to be able to use the facilities at Mount John for my PhD project some 20 years ago. This would have been the last time many of us would have met. I've done a little Google search on my name and found that there are quite a few of me out there. As a little game, I won't say which of these Tims is me until the end of the presentation. I'm a New Zealander, fortunate to grow up in this beautiful country of ours. My hometown was Wellington, making it a natural choice to attend Victoria University of Wellington for my studies. I was also lucky that Carter Observatory had a very active public outreach program. Indeed, it was a visit that they had organized by Patrick Moore, which rekindled my childhood interest in astronomy. At Victoria, I first studied with Ed Budding and Dennis Sullivan, working with Michael Zelig on chromospherically active stars for a master's. It was the PhD with Dennis and Richard Dodd that led me to spending some 88 nights observing at Mount John. Something, I think, far less than my office mate, Murray Forbes, who was establishing a standard star network. I'm sure Murray will be sharing later his adventures at Mount John. I'm very grateful for the substantial observing time Canterbury granted me. I made heavy use of William Tobin's CCD system on the one meter telescope to observe star clusters. These tended to be in the LMC, and these were then regarded as a kind of cross between open clusters, like Kappa Crucis in the lower right, and the old globular clusters, like that on the lower left. My primary goal was to understand better the distribution of massive stars form with. Here is an image of NGC 1850, one of the clusters I observed with. What I remember the most is the camaraderie of the observers at Mount John. One absolutely stunning night, all was working well with terrific data coming in. The air was stable and the stars so sharp and clear. Then the dome jammed, as it would. The other observers came to my rescue, forfeiting their own observing time on a stunning night and helped me get all back into shape and working. And indeed, that was the best night's observing I had and formed the backbone of much of the thesis. Not long after, Mount Pinatubo erupted killing 847 people in the Philippines and injecting more particulates into the stratosphere than any eruption since the 1883 Krakatoa eruption. It took a few years before I could image deep enough again. My involvement with Canterbury didn't end with the last observing run of the PhD. John Hernshaw was one of my external examiners and one of my first jobs after graduating was with the MOA project. However, I was young and wanted to see the world, so I moved to Asia not our long after graduating. I now lead a team of PhDs, and here they are. This is an innovation and research group based in Singapore. The skills picked up in astronomy are fundamental to the work we do. We process large volumes of data using statistical programming. It might amuse you to learn that I've used the bane of astronomy, light pollution, as a way to track economic development. We work a lot with the local universities on research projects. This has allowed me to keep my hand in astronomy. Ed Budding contacted me recently about optimization for light curve solutions of exoplanet systems. Optimization is an area of active interest to my company, so we were able to set up a joint project with the National University of Singapore to make such tests using the Kepler data. Singapore is also celebrating its 50th anniversary. 
So from one celebration to another, I'd like to wish you all the best. May this meeting be a tremendous success, and I look forward to hearing how it all went. And here is to at least another hundred more years for Mount John. Thank you. Oh, I nearly forgot. This is what I look like now. <laughs>